What's up guys, Thurs Cousin here. In this video, we are going to set up Cyprus and run our first test. You're gonna see that it's really simple, it's not that difficult, but it's very, very powerful. So if I were you, I would watch and I would watch till the end of the video. Let's go. Cool, so let's begin. The first thing you want to do is you want to go to cypress.io. This is the official Cypress website. It should look something like this, right? This is what we're going to be working with. And you want to tap here into documentation. This is going to bring you to the documentation part of Cypress. And you want to go to get started and then installing Cypress. And then you want to copy this command here. You want to come to your terminal. I'm going to open here a new tab and you're going to paste this command and this is going to install Cypress into your project. Then you're going to want to go back to the documentation and go here to opening the app and then copy this command here. npx Cypress open. Go back to your terminal and then paste it here. And this is now going to open Cypress and initialize it in your application. Once you have this window open, you're going to have here two options, end-to-end -end testing or component testing. Cypress allows you to do two different kinds of testing. You have end-to-end -end testing, which is actually spinning up an entire browser and then having an automated tool, Cypress, go and like tap things on your application, press buttons, type things in inputs and make sure that everything is working properly. Then you have component testing, which instead of running your entire application is only going to run individual components to test them individually in isolation. For this video, we're only going to focus on end-to-end -end testing because that is sort of the most complete testing solution that Cypress has to offer. And in my opinion, it's the one where you get the most value out of. So we're going to tap end-to-end -end testing and that is going to set up some files for us and some configurations that we need to actually run Cypress. We're going to press continue and then we're going to have here an option now to select the browser that we want to test in. And honestly, this is going to depend, I think, based off the browsers that are currently installed in your application. Usually what I like to do is either go with Chrome or Electron just because those usually tend to be the ones that everything works. But you want to make sure that you do your due diligence and make sure that your application works across any sort browser. So in our case, we're just going to use Electron and we're going to click start end to end testing in Electron. Now, as part of everything that Cypress set out for us, if I go back here to our code, you're going to see here now a new folder called Cypress, which has fixtures and support. We're going to get to these in just a moment. But if I now go back here to actually Cypress, I can press here, create a new spec. And a spec is essentially a test file. So now we're going to create a test file. This has the format of being .cy for Cypress.ts because we're working in TypeScript. And then I'm going to change this to first test and then create spec. This is going to put this code here in our spec. So I'm just going to do this and I'm going to say, OK, run the spec. This is essentially going to just spin up a simple test, right? It's going to try to get the example.cypress.io. And if it can get that successfully, this test is going to consider passed. Now we can actually go and look at this test in our code. So if I go back to VS Code, go here to Cypress and then end to end, we have here our file that says first test.cy. And this is the file that runs our test. It's super, super simple, right? It describes the test. And I know we have errors here. We're going to get to them in just a moment, but it essentially describes the test, your template spec, and then it tries to run a test. And then based off the result of that test, it will pass or fail. Now, if you have errors like this and you're using TypeScript, what you have to do is you have to do two things. You have to go into your TS config and then you have to come here and add in the include here. You want to add the Cypress folder because this Cypress folder is outside of this SRC. And so our TS config is not configured to look in there. So I'm going to come here and do Cypress and then make a comma so I can separate it. This is going to do one thing. It's going to get rid of two of these errors. And then what you want to do is this error is actually coming because of ESLint. So this only works if you have ESLint in your application, which honestly, I would always recommend that you have. You want to go here to your ESLint RC. And then you want to comment out project true, right? I'm not entirely sure why this kind of affects it, but if you do that, it's going to get rid of all of your errors and then you can save. It's going to auto format without any sort of error. So this is nice. We actually have everything that we need to write our first test. Obviously, we're not going to leave it as is. We're going to actually write a test of our own so that you can see how this works. And for that, I have here an application that is running that you can see here, Cypress demo. If I reload this page, it's going to load some to do's and then we have our to do's here. And essentially what we want to test is first that this Cypress demo actually shows up on the page when we visit it and then that we have all of our to do's showing up properly. We want to make sure that if any user opens this application, they're going to see Cypress demo and then they're going to see a list of all the to do's. So if I open up here the code, it's going to be demo.src and this is the code that's actually running this. This is actually the code that I kind of took from one of my other tutorials that was using React Query. This is what we're using to actually fetch the to do's. We have a simple function here to do's that mocks an API. We have
have here a static list of to do's, right? And then this fetch to do's function, all it does is it waits for one second. This is really important. And then it just returns to us a filtered list of the to do's based on a query, which is getting instantiated to an empty string. And it's going to then return to us the filtered to do. So this is the code that's running this application. And now what I want to do is I want to test that this H1 here is actually there. So what I want to do as part of my testing is I want to give this a new property called data test ID. Now, this is a property that you can put in HTML elements. They're actually not going to, I mean, they're all going to show up on the DOM, but it's properties that are exclusively used for testing purposes. And this is going to be the ID of this element so that we can get it in Cypress and then assert that the text in it is exactly what we expect. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to make it equal to title, right? And actually we'll do Cypress title just so it makes it a little bit more obvious in case you have other titles in your application you don't want to have naming conflicts these names do have to be unique and then we're going to go back to our first test and then we're going to kill this actually no we're not going to kill this we're going to get the actual url that we need so how do i get the url i can do npm run dev and then we have here the local host this is the url that our application is actually running in it's running locally i'm going to copy this I'm going to go back to my code and instead of visiting example.cypress.io, I'm going to visit our link here. Then I'm going to make some space and I'm going to do scythe for cypress.get because we want to get an element, open the parentheses. And now I want to make use of this data test ID attribute here to actually get our element. So I'm going to open a string, I'm going to open a square bracket and then do data test ID. And that's going to be equal to string cypress title close the inner string, close the square bracket, and then here dot should, and we're just going to do exist because we just want to check for now that this attribute actually exists. So this code, what it's going to do is it's going to call the Cypress method, the Cypress function, dot get to get this element based off of this property here, which we know should exist because we set it up here. And then it's going to make sure that this actually exists. If I go back to Cypress, which by the way, I had to switch to Chrome because for some reason it wasn't actually working otherwise, but you're going to see that Cypress already ran this test because it's programmed to run tests on safe. So it already ran this test and it confirmed that this h1 element does in fact indeed exist in the DOM. Now, this is actually not enough. We don't want to only check that this element exists, but also we want to check that it has the right text because sure it can exist, but if it's displaying the wrong text or even worse, if it's an empty string, this test is still going to pass, but our application should have a bug, right? So we want to fix that. So we'll go back to our code and instead of just doing should exist, I'm going to come here and then put an extra line and then we can chain shoulds, right? We can do dot dot should and then have dot text. And by the way, you can see all of these properties here, right? Have a property, have all deep keys, have any key, right? This is really extensive. Cypress is a great tool to like actually set up your tests. We're only gonna use have dot text, which is gonna check if this actually has some text. And then we're gonna pass here Cypress demo. We're going to save, go back to our test, and then we're gonna see that this test passed. It asserted that the H1 exists in a DOM and also that it has the correct text. Cool, so our test is now really robust and we can be confident that if this fails, there's something wrong in our application. Now, what we also need to test is that all of these to-dos are actually showing up in the application. Now, if I go back to the code for this and go back to demo, you're gonna see that our to-dos are rendered like this. We're mapping over the to-dos and then we're rendering this to-do card component that I have. If I open this to-do card, you're gonna see that every single to-do has a data test ID property on its title. It's essentially being set to to do dash to do dot id and the reason we're doing this is because remember your ids have to be unique across your application and it's always better to be a little bit more explicit and say that this is exactly a to do and that we're using the to do's id to actually identify it so with this we have everything that we need to use this in cypress and make sure that all of our to do's are actually showing up on the screen cool so let's now go back to our test file and before adding a new test let's first rename this and say maybe cypress demo and then here it renders the default elements on the screen because now we're going to have two tests right and we want to identify those so that we know what we're actually testing so we'll create our new test it and then we're going to here to put here renders renders my god if i can type the to do's on the screen and then create here an arrow function and then write our test. The first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is of course visit the same page as before. So we'll just copy this piece of code and we're gonna place it here. Now we're gonna write our code to actually test that every single to-do is actually showing up on the screen. 
Now, because in our application, we only have five to do's, I'm just going to hard code every single to do. It's not really that difficult to write five lines of code. You could do this more sophisticatedly. You could like have a loop that runs over them. That's fine. We're just going to do it manually now just to kind of illustrate how Cypress actually works. So we'll come back here and then I'm going to do the same thing kind of that we did here, right? We're going to do cypress.get and then based off this data test ID. So open the square brackets, data test ID, ID that's going to be equal to to do dash one because the IDs are going to start at one close this string close the square bracket and then should exist and then let's just see what happens if I save now I go back here to our tests and we have our test that actually passed we have the first one renders the default elements on the screen that was passing from before which is good and now we have renders the to do's on the screen which currently is only checking the first to do that's fine we're going to change that in just a moment but if you can see here if i actually click on this it's going to highlight this element in this ui here and also if i open up the developer console you're going to see here if I can zoom a little bit, you're going to see that we have a bunch of information on the actual thing that we're running, which is really, really useful. That's why you want to use Cypress. It's a very robust tool for actually doing your tests in your web applications. Cool. Now what we want to do is add the other one. So literally, I'm just going to come here and do paste, I think, five times. And I'm going to do two, three, four and five. Save this. And that's going to pass. Hopefully, right, it passed. Every single one of our to do's is there and we don't have to do anything else with this. We can now make sure that any user that opens this application in a browser is going to see Cypress demo and is going to see all of their to do's here. That is the power of testing. Obviously, there's a lot more that you can do with this, and I would highly encourage you to go and look at this documentation because there's a ton of stuff that you can do, and I've only just scratched the surface. But really, you want to use this as a tool to kind of make sure that end-to-end, -end, your entire application is working as expected. That if you click the things in the application that they behave as expected, and that if you go and you navigate to certain pages, that you're seeing the information that you expect. That is why you want to run the Cypress tests. Cool, so there you go. That was how to run Cypress and write your first test. If you've enjoyed this video, of course, you can click here to subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it. There's also a video here on your screen, which honestly, I would recommend that you watch because it was made for me, so it's probably pretty good, right? If you still haven't joined the Discord and you like to work with React, honestly, you should definitely join. It is hands down the best resource available if you're interested in React, if you're looking to learn React, you have access to me personally, and so much more things about React. It's the first link in the description. I would highly, highly recommend that you check it out. And with that being said, my name has been Darius Cousin. This is Cousin Solutions. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Ciao, ciao.